Now that we've talked about transformations with our linears, let's look at a different function. So we're going to be looking at the absolute value function. And if you look at the parent function here, it makes this V shape. And remember, that's because absolute value is always positive. So we're at 1, it's going to be the absolute value of 1 is positive 1. The absolute value of negative 1 is also positive 1. So that's why that makes that lovely um, V shape um, in our graph. So what we're looking at here is there's a vertex, which is that point um, in the corner of your V. And we also have what's called the vertex form of the function, which we're going to be looking at as well. OK, so what's cool also about the absolute value function is the idea that it's symmetric about the y-axis, meaning it's a mirror image, right? So there's some line, and right here it's that line um, x equals 0. That cuts the graph kind of in half, if you think of it that way, where it basically reflects and um, you know comes back up, all right, where it changes direction. Um, in this case, domain here is all real numbers, and range is going to be greater than 0 for this parent function. So um, we're going to be comparing everything to this parent function for the time being. OK, so if we take a look at the example, Again, using f of x equals a absolute value of x as our parent function, meaning that's our basic one here. Um, let's go ahead and graph it and then talk about the discrete domain and range. And what I like to do, again, like with the linear function, is I'll graph the parent function, think about the transformation, and then see what happened. So. Let me go ahead and quickly graph my parent. I'm going to go by ones. And again, that vertex is at 0, 0. And then absolute value is super easy to remember because it's always positive. So negative 1 goes to 1, negative 2 goes to 2, negative 3 goes to 3. And there's my lovely V. So now we have to remember what happened um, with our transformations before, because our transformation rules are actually going to be the same, even though our functions are different. So when we're talking about just A and B here, you'll notice these are linear, um, sorry, horizontal and vertical uh, transfer translations. So let's just refresh our memory. How do we know when we have a horizontal translation? Versus a vertical translation. Well, remember, the rule is if we have some transformation g of x and we want to move it side to side, it's going to be um, f of x, and then we're going to do something to that x value. So we can add it to add a number to it, subtract a number from it, whatever, right? So just remember with the horizontal, it's going to be the opposite of what you expect. So for adding, we're going to go to the left. If we're subtracting, we're going to go to the right. Okay. Vertical translation, again, if we have some transformation g of x, and we're taking that parent function f of x, it's going to be when we add or subtract something to the entire function. So notice how that's not inside the parentheses with x. Um, and then remember, this one's pretty straightforward. You're either going to go up if it's positive or go down if it's negative. So just refreshing your memory there. So if you take a look at A and B, how would you describe these two transformations? Well, hopefully you saw that when we have the absolute value of x plus 2, this plus 2 is happening outside of x, right? It's happening to the original parent function, the absolute value of x, right? So that means we're going to go up to. So g of x is f of x translated up two units, or two spaces. So that's my description, and then I want to graph it. So then I can take each point, just like I be did before, right, and just literally move it in the way I described. So I'm going to move every point up two, and whatever it will fit on my grid, of course. If it goes off the grid, then we can stop. And I'm using two different colors, which you are also welcome to do. And then don't forget, let's label each one. So the blue one was f of x, and the red one is g of x. All right. 
Last thing, domain and range. And I want to do the domain and range of the new function, so of g of x. So now I want to look at the red, right, and describe the domain and range there. The original domain was all real numbers. The original range is y is greater than equal to 0, right? So let's see if that changed. Well, my domain is still going to go all over that x-axis. So my domain is still all real numbers. And then my range now has moved up from 0. So my smallest value, my lowest, my minimum, is at 2. So it's going to be y is greater than or equal to 2. So remember, if you're still having questions about domain and range, please, please make sure you're asking in class, because we're going to continue looking at that right, as we start preparing for our, our unit test, our chapter test. Okay. So let's take a look at b. Now we'll want to see the difference between a and b, right? Now we have the plus 3 inside the absolute value with the x. So when we're dealing with something happening to just x, that's horizontal. And remember, we want to think the opposite. So m of x is f of x translated 3 units. And remember, we want to do the opposite, so we're going to go left. And again, if it helps, feel free to graph the parent and then move the parent. So let me do that really fast. Okay, so there's my parent function. And then I can go ahead and move everything to the left three. So I'm going to go one, two, three, right? One, two, three, one, two, three, and so on. And of course, whatever doesn't fit, you can just leave off. So this in red is my m of x. And once again, let's do domain and range. So because we're still going to go on forever left and right, it's still all real numbers for domain. And then range, we didn't move up or down, so y is still stuck, lowest point is 0, so that stays exactly the same as the parent. Okay, go ahead and try that. You try 1 and 2. Remember, you're doing the exact same thing I'm doing, right? Describe, graph, write domain and range. And remember, we're doing with translations here. So give it a shot. So check and see your graphs and your descriptions. Remembering again to label your parent function if you drew it and also your um, transformation. Okay? Let's move on to stretching, compressing, and reflecting. And for absolute value, we're just going to focus on the um, horizontal reflection. So we're going to refl reflect across the x-axis. So in case you've forgotten these rules, let me just remind you real fast. Um, for a stretch versus a compression, it depends on what we're multiplying. Oops, I can certainly spell here. So stretch is when you take, for example, if you're making a brand new transformation, g of x, it's going to be when you multiply something to the original parent function. And for a stretch, that value needs to be greater than 1. If it's just 1, it stays the same. Um, if it's greater than 1, we're going to stretch it out, right? We're going to um, make it a little skinnier, pull it up toward the y-axis. The compression, oops, my hand keeps popping that calendar up. So compression is the exact same thing, right? We have this brand new transformed function because we multiplied something to f of x, but the difference now is instead of being greater than 1, we need to be between 0 and 1. So we want to be like 1 half or 1 third, etc. So that's stretch versus compression. So they're going to look very similar, but you want to look at the number. And then remember when we reflect, it's when we multiply um, the entire function by negative 1, because we're only going to look at that reflecting over the x-axis or over a horizontal line. So again, it's something like some transformation g of x. We're going to multiply negative or negative 1 times the entire function f of x, and it's going to flip over the x-axis. So that is just a quick reminder of what we did with linear, and remember the rules don't change. It's just a function that's different. So now we're looking at v's. So if we take a look at the example c and d, let's describe what's happening and then let's graph them. So if you take a look at s of x, we're multiplying the entire parent, which is absolute value of x, right, by negative 1, or sorry, 1 half. 
losing it today. So 1 half, is that greater than 1 or between 0 and 1? Well, that's between 0 and 1, so this must be a compression. So s of x is f of x um, compressed by a factor of 1 half. And this is going to be a vertical compression. So we are going to squish it down toward that x-axis. All right, so let's go ahead and graph this thing. So I went ahead and graphed my parent function. And because I'm multiplying each y value, because I'm multiplying the whole function, right, the output by 1 half, I may want to pick and choose which ones I'm going to graph. So I might look at 0, and 0 times 1 half is still 0, because I'm looking at the y value. And then 2 times 1 half is super easy. That's 1. I'm ignoring the 1 because I may not want to estimate where that 1 half is. And you can feel free to do that as well, right? I'm going to skip the 3 because I don't really want to estimate where 1 and a half is because it's not on the grid line. But I do know half of 4 is 2. So you are definitely welcome to do what I did and just do a little mental math or make a table. Tables are always, always handy. And that's S of X, all right? And then domain and range, same as before. Right? This domain, if you look at the arrows, goes on forever, all real numbers. And then range, didn't go lower than zero, so still greater than or equal to zero. Okay. Take a look at D. Look at this R of X. This, don't be fooled, there's two things happening to it because there's a negative there. So if you want to, we can consider R of X is actually negative one times two times the absolute value of X. So let's describe both of those things. So the negative one does what to it? flips it over the x-axis and the 2 is greater than 1 so it's a stretch so we want to describe both of those transformations all right so really r of x is f of x um, reflected over the x-axis because that's the negative one reflected oh, i'm really having a bad time spelling today reflected over or across the x-axis and stretched, we're pulling it up toward the y-axis by a factor of 2. Let me make that a little nicer. All right, so let's graph this thing. So once again, there's my parent function. I'm going to start the vertex because I always want to have the vertex in my graph. And I'm going to take each y-value and multiply it by 2. And I'm going to go below because I want to flip it over to the other side of the x-axis. So I'm going to get a skinnier v that is upside down. So now if we describe this domain, again, it's still going to go on forever left and right, so that's still all real numbers. But then the range now is upside down, so y has to be less than or equal to 0. So I want to make sure we caught that. Okay? Go ahead and try that you try problem uh, 3 and 4 and then we'll come back and check our answers. All right, so go ahead and check those answers and let's come back to class with questions because we wanna make sure we're really remembering those flips, the reflections, the compressions, the translations because we're gonna put it all together and do compositions, right, of uh, transformations with these absolute values when we work back in class. Thanks for listening.